Hey guys, hope you are all having a great day. So today's topic of discussion is certainly not one that will put smiles on all of you. In fact, it will be quite distasteful, uncomfortable and infuriating to many. Recent developments coming directly from AMC's CEO Adam Aaron have caused a huge tidal fraction once again in the AMC community which has everyone up in arms, digging themselves in the trenches ready to call out anyone and everyone that is unlucky enough to differ. I myself had a pretty strong reaction to what Adam Aaron said, but I decided to delay my reaction a couple days, taking the weekend to sorta of breathe in and listen to what everyone on Twitter and Reddit had to say. My position hasn't changed, but my approach has, and I think that's vital, because I want to address this heavily controversial topic in a manner that is both genuine to myself for the sake of authenticity to you, while simultaneously maintaining open communication with you guys so that you can give feedback. Remember that I welcome all types of differing opinions from my own, but what I will not tolerate is people resorting to insults to get their points across because they never bothered to develop any sense of emotional maturity. This will be a controversial video, perhaps the biggest one I have ever made, and I am making it because I believe in AMC as a company, but I strongly believe the time to question if the board is doing what is best for shareholders has come. As such, with these things all having been said, let's dive in. Let's begin with a little bit of context as that is always key to starting any relevant conversation from the same standpoint. AMC, as they have made known before, plans to convert the APE units into common stock in order to raise fresh capital. This capital, according to Adam Aaron and other formal statements, will be used to help reduce the debt that is crushing AMC. APE units were introduced last year to the dismay of around half the community as I saw, and that is a subjective opinion. However, I do think I have a pretty accurate perception of at least the vocal crowd in the AMC community, enough to assess that I think at the time when Ape was introduced, half the community was reluctant with the move and the other half saw it as a necessary means to an end, which is to save AMC. They argued that if AMC didn't do that, the company would file for bankruptcy and all our investment would mean nothing, which is a fair assessment if I am being honest, but one I do not share. For years now, I have questioned and criticized AMC's approach to building and growing their business, and their inability to find new creative ways to enhance revenue sources. In fact, with the millions of dollars they raised, AMC decided to go ahead and invest a portion of it into a gold mining company that to this very date after their investment, has not made any progress. As any rational person will say, the investment was placed on a high-risk company and did not have any good results for AMC as a whole. So back to where we were. AMC is now in the last part of the plan, which is to convert these APE units back into AMC common stock. However, months in court have proven that this is a significantly harder task to get through than initially thought. Last week, Delaware's Court of Chancery denied the proposed settlement that would have allowed the company to proceed with the plan. It ruled against the proposed settlement between AMC and shareholders because, according to the filing, the two parties offer no good cause to lift the status quo order, which is a necessary move to proceed with the conversion. This decision came days after AMC agreed to settlement terms relating to a shareholder lawsuit against the company over converting APE shares to common stock. This settlement would have enabled a 10 to 1 stock split, allowing the company to sell more shares. AMC shareholders put forth a proposal for the conversion of stock in a reverse stock split. However, the plan was put on hold when a different group of shareholders filed a lawsuit against the cinema theater chain in Delaware Chancery Court, seeking to prevent the decision. The lawsuit claimed that the company and its directors were trying to weaken the voting influence of common shareholders who had not supported the stock conversion scheme. As a result of this court decision, AMC share price quickly rallied, running around 100% in the post market. Left and right, particularly on Twitter. I could not escape people yelling that it's time for the squeeze, to get ready for the imminent MOAS. Empty promises, are worse, with highly influential people telling gullible followers to load up on call as the stock would be running Monday past $12. Twitter was an absolutely chaotic place to be if you were an AMC investor, which in a way was heartwarming seeing so many people be involved with the company still. Well, the hype blew up, everyone was ready for a run-up, which I knew would not come, something I said on Twitter and garnered quite a backlash as usual. God forbid you tell people to proceed with caution and not just do what any on the web tells them in regards to gambling everything away and calls out of fear of missing out, but regardless, the vibe was insane. On top of that, another factor that was greatly contributing to the discussion of AMC was the fact that Barbenheimer, the term coined to refer to the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer, 
had one of the best performances in theaters, breaking many records across the board. This thing further elevated enthusiasm in the community, which rallied everyone up. It was what would happen next that would absolutely trigger everyone up. Adam Aaron, who apparently cannot miss any opportunity to screw up the stock price momentum his own company has, decided to issue out an open letter on Twitter, one that discredited investors' input into AMC and more annoyingly, confirming fears that AMC is indeed keen on taking actions in the near future that will dilute the stock even more than it already is. That's right, this man took the one weekend when AMC was kinda being hyped up by everyone to be the party pooper and express his intent to dilute your investment. The one little time in this year when AMC had a spotlight, Adam Aaron had to come and take away all its potential. And if you think it's just me perceiving this to be, take a look through Reddit. I mean, even the most fanatics of AMC that kneel and kiss the ground wherever Adam Aaron steps were questioning what was running through this man's head that prompted him to say such a thing. The timing of this letter is suspect, 100%. I am not one to say things like Adam Aaron is a hedge fund insider because I have no evidence to back it up, but man it was hard to not speak my mind as I really wanted on social media. This man has been acting incredibly weird this past year. He went from being one of the most open CEOs, holding open conversations with his investors to outright ignoring everyone. I mean, the comments on his tweets have been roasting him to no end, calling him out in really despicable manners that I myself don't approve of, as this kind of action will deter him from opening up. Remember that Adam Aaron is also a person and that even though you disapprove of him, just like I do, it is by no means justification to harass the man into a corner. But still, the chance for him to speak up on the issues that clearly saturate all AMC conversations is there and he has not taken it. Instead, the moment he does decide to talk, he chooses to talk about dilution at the worst possible timing imaginable. I am going to read the letter out to you guys so you can experience it as I did. It goes, an open letter to our investors on July 23rd of 2023. Raising fresh equity in the near term is critical to our company so it is important that we work to address the concern raised in the Delaware Court of Chancery's ruling on Friday. In leading AMC through this once-in-a-century pandemic and its aftermath, I have been driven by this overarching goal, do not let AMC fall into financial ruin, ensure that AMC survives, put AMC on a path to eventually thrive. Along the way, I have done my utmost to be transparent with AMC shareholders, and am doing so again right now. AMC must be in a position to raise equity capital. I repeat, to protect AMC's shareholder value over the long term, we must be able to raise equity capital. That is especially the case now with the added uncertainty caused by the writers and actors' strikes, which could delay the release of movies currently scheduled for 2024 and 2025. If we are unable to raise equity capital, the risk materially increases of AMC conceivable running out of cash in 2024 and 2025, or of AMC being unable to satisfactorily refinance and stretch out the maturity of some of our debt, which is required of us beginning as early as 2024. The risk of financial collapse is not whimsical. Cineworld Regal, the second largest movie theater chain in the world, fell into bankruptcy and their equity holders were essentially wiped out. Bed, Bath & Beyond which was viewed as the third most watched meme stock, also fell into bankruptcy and their equity holders also were essentially wiped out. Fortunately, at AMC, we have been much smarter, much more agile and much more skillful. We have risen to every COVID challenge heretofore, and I have every confidence in our continued ability to successfully navigate through these complicated times. The AMC shareholders who actually voted in our March 14th special election understood all this, 72% of AMC common shareholders and 91% of eight preferred unit holders who casted votes agreed with our boards and my view as to how best to proceed. We appreciate their support, and genuinely know that they are in our corner. We sincerely believe we are on the surest path to ensuring AMC's survival, by allowing us to raise equity and to do so at the highest possible price with the least amount of dilution. With millions of shareholders, though, understandably there are many voices, many opinions and many critics. Some wish ill for the company and have nefarious aims. Some are grandstanding, and trying to gain notoriety for themselves at AMC's expense. These individuals do not deserve your trust, but most are well-intentioned and are motivated by varying concerns. Some are distraught if the value of their AMC shares or APE units fall. Some are skeptical and greatly troubled by how Wall Street markets function, their anger about their view of manipulative practices is constantly visible on Twitter. And many are just trying to understand how, what and why we are doing what we do. 
they especially are trying to figure out the impact dilution may have on their AMC investment. To these latter groups, I would say again, AMC Entertainment must put ourselves in a position to be able to raise equity capital. That is what will make it more likely that first we survive and then that we thrive. Indeed, over the last several years, there has been an enormous short share position in AMC stock. In my view, the wisest way to defeat that short thesis is to take bankruptcy risk off the table, to the extent possible. And we do that by AMC being able to raise equity if, as and when needed. I don't hold these views cavalierly. Remember, I am AMC's largest retail shareholder, with an economic interest in more than 8.3 million AMC shares or APE units. And while I did file a share selling plan in August of 2021 that was implemented over a three-month period, I have not sold a single AMC share or APE unit in more than a year and a half, and have no intention of selling any shares or units anytime soon. My own finances are directly aligned with ours. As I have said before, I ride with you. Accordingly, given the absolute imperative to be able to raise equity capital going forward, we take seriously the court's Friday's ruling. In response, yesterday we along with the plaintiffs filed with the Delaware court, a modification of the legal release surrounding the settlement of the Delaware litigation in an effort to address the court's voiced concern. If the court agrees, it would be our hope to implement as soon as possible the plan approved in the AMC stockholders election in March. In closing, I would remind everyone that we have several enormously popular movies in our theaters this minute, highlighted by Barbie, Oppenheimer, Sound of Freedom and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. All this effort around AMC Entertainment these past three plus years has been about saving movie going in theaters in America and the world over. I encourage you all to enjoy the fruits of that labor, go see dazzling images on our huge silver screens, enjoy yourselves and go see a movie. Personally, I found that statement to have a lot of fluff to minimize the impact of the intended purpose, which is to formally announce that AMC is planning on further diluting the stock. Things must be really bad because AMC is apparently, according to this letter, on the brink of collapsing just like Regal Cinemas did. I found the statement where Adam Aaron says that AMC has been much smarter and agile to be wrong. He is beating his own horn trying to take credit for a success that did not come from either him or the board. The one and sole reason AMC is standing is because on January of 2021, investors flocked to AMC and a significant portion of them didn't let go. That's it. There was nothing that AMC did that contributed to this success outside of being lucky. Had investors flocked to Regal Cinema's stock, AMC would have been done for right now. Because of this, I found this messaging part to be disingenuous. The part where he says AMC must put themselves in a position to be able to raise equity capital to pretty much signify preparation for more dilution in the future, and I doubt it will be only one more too. The way this was said, it's messaging that there will be multiple instances of this, and this is a huge problem because I am not okay with it. First of all, dilution is bad for the shareholder. For some reason, there is a scary number of AMC investors who believe dilution to be a good thing defending its merits as a means to save a company that will otherwise not exist. To them, it's a zero-sum scenario where they either do it or they are done for, which is the same exact framing that Adam Aaron used in this statement. I vehemently disagree. First of all, AMC is not in a state where there is only one way out. AMC has had years now worth of investor input feedback, and money, to finance new ventures that will help them with their debt. Instead, at every single turn, AMC has made every bad decision, from investing the money in gold mining penny stocks to simply just allowing people to use Ethereum to pay for a movie ticket. The only grace they have is that they decided to begin selling popcorn in retail stores, something that honestly should have been done years ago. I don't know why AMC waited until the last minute to get this done, but credit where it deserves. AMC has plenty of opportunity to manufacture new ways to raise revenue without digging into investor pockets. Diluting a company over and over and over again is bad because it will lessen the amount of votes and ownership investors have over a company. You get absolutely nothing, because by the way, Adam Aaron cannot guarantee this will work. Diluting the company is not a guarantee that they will be able to pay their debts, and he has not shown evidence of a structured plan that shows it so. That means that so long as Adam Aaron can, he will turn to diluting as the preferred alternative to raising capital to pay debt, which honestly doesn't speak good at all about the board overall. If you cannot come with a new plan to generate revenue, then you need to leave your position immediately. I am seeing a lot of scary takes on this, with people saying to just simply buy non-stop, 
to ignore this dilution and that this will cause a squeeze as shorts will be trapped. Needless to say, must I remind everyone when ape units were announced, and everyone defended them by saying ape units would show the real number of shares, that they would force a squeeze, that they would expose the stock manipulation? Where are all the people that called me a shill for saying ape was a blatant attempt at digging into an investor's wallet? It's a cost far too high and the framing that it's either this or nothing is unacceptable. If this is indeed how they feel, we as investors should be looking to replace the board with members who have fresh ideas of how to run a company without always resulting in dilutive ways. Overall, I love AMC, I love the company and see its potential, something I have talked about in great length before. But the board is AMC's biggest problem right now, and I think they should be the ones on the chopping block because I don't see the value they bring to the table. Let me know your thoughts below in the comment, I am really curious to see how you guys feel about all of this. Remember to be 100% sincere, even if you disagree, but to keep it PG-13. We don't need to turn this into a Twitter argument. If you are interested in day trading, swing trading, weekly options or long-term investments, please check out my Discord. We have a lot of services set up for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and to the moon.